Great, thank you everyone. Welcome to today's webinar um, on the tech and learning how XY can scan your materials to 3D rendering and visualization. Presenting today is Thomas Meeker, a 3D solution architect at XY Panton. I'm Robert Grotan, the Global Technical Marketing Manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Just a few things to go over before we get started. Due to the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. If you have any questions, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel. We'll have time to answer a few of your questions at the end. Finally, this webinar will be recorded and you'll receive a link so that you can review the webinar at your, at your convenience. This should go out tomorrow. So with that, I'll turn it over to Thomas to get things started. All right. Thanks, Robert. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining today. Uh, as uh, Robert mentioned, my name is Thomas Meeker. I'm a 3D solution architect uh, for our TAC uh, group of products, which, stands, uh, which is an acronym for Total Appearance Capture. Um, today, we'll be talking about our virtual material scan services. Um, this is something we've been doing since the launch in 2016 of our TAC ecosystem um, tech uh, group of products. Um, but we are definitely finding as we are all working from home and, and trying to collaborate in different ways that um, material uh, scans and digital uh, materials are becoming, of course, much more um, uh, popular and people are seeing the benefits. So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right. One second. There we go. All right. So, why are you here? So, there may be, um, depending on uh, what you, what industry you're in, or uh, 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 what you're doing right now, you may be seeing that there's a new benefit by using digital materials. Um, this has been something, like I said, is growing quite a bit. Uh, people are, because they're working from home, they can't have the physical samples sent out to everybody's house for approvals. So having another form of uh, doing approvals or uh, design concepts or things like that, uh, working with digital materials can, can uh, speed up uh, that process. So we'll go on to the next one. So, so now we are working in a virtual workplace often. Now, you know, you may have already been working uh, virtually, but finding that you're working even more so now. So we're now working in a growing digital environment. So the goal of this is to ensure that we can do accurate visualizations of coloring materials. So using a 3D rendering software, something like that, which I'll talk about more in just a bit. Uh, we are hoping to expedite uh, color material and design approvals. So this is a way for us to say, look at this material and go, oh yeah, this is exactly what I had in mind. And you can sign off on that without having to ever look at the physical um, or at least make some design choices where there's only a few physical materials that you would have to actually um, uh, take a look at for approvals. And then lastly, enable remote design and calibration. So, you know, whether you're working across different geographies uh, across North America, whatever that may be, um, you can now use uh, uh, remote uh, tools to be able to start to do uh, collaborations and, and, and approvals. So this just gives an idea of where in the um, workflow uh, supply chain where these digital materials might be useful. So although I talk a lot about product design and approvals and things like that, um, these are being used uh, to a large degree in marketing. So getting ideas out there, maybe even before the product's been uh, manufactured. Uh, we're using these obviously in the inspiration stage as part of the product design um, in pre-production. So uh, actually doing some prototyping with that. And, uh, and eventually on the consumer side. So you may eventually use these for some sort of configurator or something like that where the, the, the customer could come to the uh, website and actually do the designing using these digital materials. 
So how was this done in the past? Well, typically the way that you would um, create materials was an artist would take the time digitally to work and create these and um, guests, using guest work, get as close as they possibly could. Well, that is incredibly subjective. Um, so we want to get closer and closer to that accuracy. So we're really working with the, the full appearance of the material. And so what our technology does is gets you closer to uh, physically correct um, and highly accurate uh, materials. So I'm going to talk more about our partners in a little bit, but I wanted you to see who we are working with right now. So some of you may already be working in a 3D um, modeling and rendering workflow. Others may be new to it. Um, these are some of our partners. Now, when we started in 2016, this list was three, and you can see how over the past four years, um, our uh, partner network has grown considerably. So we're really excited about our partnerships and where things are going um, with our AXF file at the center there, which I'll talk about more here. All right, so first of all, we have the TAP technology. So this is, most, this is the hardware and software that we use to do the measurements. I want to point out down here in the right hand corner, we talk about uh, we talked about some of those partners here. So bread uh, is up here in our partner network. You see that same logo down here. And so that's just showing that this rendering of a car paint on uh, this abstract um, uh, like fin design uh, was uh, rendered in uh, bread. So just to be on the lookout for that because there's a lot of different partners that we use to do these slides um, and it'll point out which ones we used. So TAC brings virtual designs and again TAC is total appearance capture, bring virtual designs to life with digital materials that are physically correct. So we want to make sure we're working with truly accurate materials and all the materials except for um, the records are all um, scanned with the TAC the tax scanner. So here is our scanner. This is the top portion of it. Um, this is the device that is used to actually scan the materials. I've got some point, um, some uh, uh, information here about what we're using, but I think this slide shows it a little bit better. This is kind of under the hood. So we're using structured light projectors um, for industry grade cameras, spectrophotometers, a linear light source. We're using 32 point light sources. Those are all these objects here, which we use for different angles of illumination to truly understand how light reacts with that material. We also use a backlight module for understanding things like transparency. Um, it's on a rotation stage so that we can actually rotate the material and get uh, images of the different angles. And we also use eight uh, spectral filter wheels um, in front of uh, the light sources to um, do the color, the color uh, acquisition. Um, so for the capture, we have a number of samples here on the right. Uh, it talks about the different uh, materials that we scan right now. Um, some of the materials that we cannot do right now but are on our roadmap include fluorescent. Um, that will actually be available later this year. Uh, we're adding a, a spectral filter wheel in front of one of the cameras to do fluorescence and using UV light. Uh, uh, large pattern repeats. Uh, so extra large pattern repeats are difficult because of the, the, the uh, size of the acquisition measurement area. And I'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, Retroinflection and occlusion. So things like fur and hair and height, um, uh, carpet pile are things that uh, would really be done with geometry and not just a material. Um, so those ones uh, are difficult for the tack. Um, but you can see all other materials we can scan uh, with a with a great level of accuracy. So this uh, first uh, image here is showing uh, one is a photograph and one is a rendering. Typically, I would ask the question, which do you believe is the rendering? Which do you believe is the photograph? Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and point out that we have the virtual uh, rendered version on the left and the photograph on the right. Um, 
what is important to us is that not only is the scanned uh, image accurate, but we can actually repeat it with a camera. So on the left, we were using a software called V-Ring, and on the right, it, it shows you that we use the Canon uh, 6D uh, DSLR camera um, with our x ray Spectralite QC light booth, which was recreated in the virtual scene. So we can actually do an apples to apples comparison for validation. But not only having accurate materials in one software is important, but also that it's accurate across the different rendering platforms. So on the left, we're using V-Ray, and on the right is Autodesk uh, Red Professional. So we can show that the materials are being uh, visualized or um, recreated uh, correctly across the different platforms. So just to talk quickly about our appearance exchange format. So the appearance exchange format is the file format of the material after it's been scanned. So the AXF file is what we like to call the digital twin of a physical material sample. So this is comprising the full appearance measurement information plus me metadata. And that metadata is a really important aspect that I'll be talking about here in the next slide or two. So our mission, of course, is to design, develop, deliver, and promote the adoption of a universal file format. So it's important that we are able to represent these materials accurately. But it's also important to us that that file format can be used across different platforms. So that partner network that I showed earlier. So the AXF uh, allows for the creation of highly accurate digital material databases. So if you're working to create your digital database that can be used by the different departments, this um, allows for that creation and makes it um, a very robust format. So you may have already uh, come into contact with our uh, color exchange format. That is our, um, our uh, format that's created by many of our spectrophotometers, uh, bench tops, uh, handhelds. And then the appearance exchange format is basically an evolution of that uh, CSF format, now having other characteristics, not just color, but also things like uh, reflectivity, uh, glossiness, uh, texture, things like that. So um, what I was talking about earlier, that this AXF is really uh, not just the material, but it's also all the information about the material. So you have this metadata, so how we think about this is that it's this, you know, tree that that actually has all of these different uh, characteristics. So you could save in information about the uh, tensile qualities or uh, the material makeup, things like that, that are important to make it not only can you visualize it, but you can share that information with inside of this file format. So the benefits accurate measurement of colors, so low delta E, we're doing spectral definition of colors, not just the camera RGB. Um, so if we just took a picture, uh, a simple picture of the material, of course, that's affected by the lighting in the room and stuff like that. So it's not just that photograph. We're really doing the spectral definition. Uh, we're measuring gloss levels. Um, it works for complex materials like translucent plastics and shiny metal metals shiny metals or coating. Uh, it also captures complex effects like anisotropy. So does it change based on the viewing normal or lighting or the, yeah, the viewing normal. Uh, and also the index of refraction for uh, full material fidelity. As we saw before in the partner network, AXF is a widely accepted data format across multiple industries and works in many tools. And X-ray Pantone uh, stands for more than 50 years of color expertise. So we have that background um, to back our, our uh, file format. So I'm just gonna go through these really quickly because I really do wanna ask uh, or look to see if we have any questions. Um, but I did wanna talk about what is what are the material models that we're using. So our AXF is using a format called BRDF, which is a bi-directional reflectance distribution function. This is simply a, uh, well, I shouldn't say simply, but what it is is it's a, uh, a mathematical um, uh, way of communicating materials inside of uh, of the 3D software. 
So this is a format that's being used by many companies, uh, whether they're creating it artistically or doing measured materials. So what that means is that we're measuring things. We have the diffuse color, our specular color, things like roughness, um, if it's isotropic or anisotropic, which I've got an example of coming up, um, and to define the gloss, uh, for now, and if there's a clear coat, we have an index of refraction. So what makes ours different is we are a spatially varying version of a BRDF. So that just means that we can understand a material from many more angles than um, just a simple uh, BRDF uh, acquisition. Um, so we are adding things also like a diffuse color map and specular color map um, for uh, for these uh, material materials as well. So we use things also called normal maps to understand the material, uh, material texture, sorry. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead. So this material obviously is much more, uh, as, a, as a real texture to it. So we wanna make sure we're representing that correctly. Um, and then we also, if you've heard of PBR, which, no, it's not the beer. It's uh, considered physically based rendering. Um, these are workflows that are used right now. And uh, we, um, uh, our materials work in those workflows, um, but with a higher level of physical accuracy than just artist created versions. So you have a colored specular map. And then I was talking earlier about isotropic and anisotropic material. So does that material change its appearance uh, depending on the viewing angle? And I've got a slide coming up here, but this also has an anisotropic rotation map at the bottom, and that's what's different here. So this is showing it as an isotropic, meaning that it's, there's no variation uh, of that material. And this is the anisotropic. So it's subtle, but it's the true appearance of that material. So that's gonna be a really important aspect if you're wanting to communicate this um, to your colleagues or designers or whoever you're working with. So, um, and that is something that is not necessarily available for all um, formats. So something that is unique to um, uh, RAXF format and measured materials. We also now offer what's called a displacement map. And that works with the normal map. So you see the displacement here and the normal here. And that actually affects the geometry of our, like our CAD model, so that you get an even more um, uh, realistic representation of anything with real texture. So this is like a, a stamped leather. And uh, uh, so it has a very uh, specific, uh, like raised orientation. You can see it here a little bit more. So I also talked about transparency. So we can also uh, measure transparency, and that is uh, represented through an alpha map. Uh, and all these maps are working together to, to represent the material. And then we ta I talked earlier, you can also do clear coats, um, and that uh, needs an index of refraction. And uh, and then we also create a normal. So if there's, if, like this is a uh, clear coat over a leather. So we have the leather uh, normal down here. So that's representing the leather. And we also have a clear coat uh, normal for the clear coat itself, which just adds to that level of realism. And then we also do car paint. So the CPA material uh, is a little more sophisticated in that we have to also measure things like flake. And color flop, we can do the color flop with, an, with our spatially varying BRDF, but it's the flake and stuff like that that we really um, work to use um, for the car paint. So it's a little, just adds an extra level um, with this format, the CPA format, we call it. So going back to those partners, um, I hope some of you are using some of these softwares now. If you're not, um, we are also available to do consulting uh, and help you through the process of deciding a workflow. Um, that's something that we started offering this year. 
and 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 has been really helpful for some of our customers who have been looking at this but really needed uh, some help making that first leap um, into this type of workflow. So here are just a few renderings. So this was one done for Adidas. This is an Adidas shoe um, all, using all ASF materials. This one was done uh, with Shoemaster um, for uh, high heel design. You can actually see this red material is that one that we looked at with the, the photograph versus the, the digital. One of our other partners is um Dassault Systems uh, and they have a software called DeltaGen and so this is a rendering of a car paint that was done uh, with their software. We also have the ability to do translucency now which is a big deal because subsurface scattering uh, which is when light enters the material and scatters versus the typical opaque material is a very difficult thing to measure but something that we've added uh, in the past year. And then um, just to give some context, so on the left you see our AXS SVBRDF with all of its maps. So the idea is that you can take our AXS and then use it in your software that uses CAD geometry as well as a high dynamic range image uh, for the lighting. Uh, it could use the high dynamic range image or it could use other lighting, but that's what it takes to build these photorealistic renderings. So this is a basketball one of our first examples we did uh, many years ago. I also wanted to point out, we do have a free uh, um, uh, Pantora, we call it the Pantora viewer. It's our AXF uh, free viewer. If you're interested to take a look, we offer some free AXS on our website, as well as this free viewer. So please download and take a look. So if you're interested, the process is very easily. Just gather your materials, mail them to x uh, We do have a form that you can fill out uh, and you'll work with one of our salespeople to help in that process. Uh, we will scan your materials and then we will also um, then provide the digital format but also return your original physical samples if you'd like. And just to give an idea, this is inside the tax, the drawer that opens, where which is the tax scanner, sorry. Um, with, and it shows you the size of the materials uh, that can be scanned, and uh, we also have some specification sheets that we could that we can send out with this information. So one of the things that it's worth pointing out is if you've worked with digital materials before, you have what you see on the left, which is the raw version. So it looks like a bunch of squares that's building it up. Well, that's because the material has not been edited. Um, meaning just that we're making it a seamless texture, which is what you see on the right. So you wouldn't want to use the one on the left in a production workflow. You'd want to use the one on the right, and we do this work for you as part of our scan service. So lastly, um, I have uh, Bruce Wright's contact here. He is our North American uh, uh, sales manager for materials and digitization. Um, please reach out to him or uh, um, Robert will be sharing some information later as well to uh, go to our website or uh, if uh, you'd like for us to contact you, we can do that as well. Thank you. Uh, I hope that was informative. I'd like to take the last seven or so minutes and do some questions. Um, yep. And yes, that's a uh, rendered version of me as a Lego. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. If you have a question that you'd like to ask, feel free to submit one now. Looks like we have a few coming in already. While we wait for questions, I am going to pop up another polling question. If you are interested in having a salesperson contact you, feel free to answer this polling question, and we'll be sure to get someone in touch. Perfect. I'll Perfect. give that a few seconds. Go ahead. If you see any questions coming in, Thomas, you can start answering them. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, yeah, got a couple of questions here. The first one uh, is asking if we can send a link to the recording, and, and Robert will be doing that, uh, like yeah. you said, yep. in the next day or two. Perfect.
Perfect. And then let's see, got the poll coming in. Great. Um, so we also uh, have a question about uh, the ASF format and how you can add more uh, data to that. So it is, um, we have some companies that are doing uh, just manual, um, uh, adding that information manually. We have other people that have created barcode systems and use scanners to be able to uh, add that data. And so there's a, there's a number of ways to do it. You can even import XML or, or CSV uh, files to do it. And we'll take yeah, so one more question. Perfect. Perfect. So yeah, um, somebody asked, is the, is the hardware for sale? Yes. We also do sell um, our tax scanner as well as our virtual light booth uh, for um, sale if you want to have the, the technology uh, in, in your workplace. So we offer this as a service, uh, scan service, but we also do sell the hardware. Perfect. Thank you. We also do have a tax video. Um, since we're running up against time, we won't play it here but I'll link to that, it's on YouTube, I'll link to that recording in the um, email that goes out tomorrow, just the follow-up email. So oh, there's a few other questions. I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, there are a few other questions we didn't get to. I'll also export those and send them over to Thomas and he can try to follow up. So again, I'd like to say thank you everyone for joining today and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.